Hello there. It's good to see you again. I know I've been gone for a little bit and a few days have passed since I uh, last did a discipleship training time. That time I've traveled from Washington back here home and uh, back into Studio B, as I call my uh, home back room office. And uh, I'm going to start up again with our discipleship training. And once again, I want to take a look at what do each of the Gospels say Jesus was about? What is the emphasis of that Gospel? And then how does that speak into our lives as disciples? And so we're going to take a look at John. And John is different than the other three. There's a reason the other three are called the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They all tell the story of Jesus in a, in a similar timeline and fashion, although they use very different emphasis and they do use some different stories in there. But there are also some stories in there that appear in each of the three Gospels. That's why they're called Synoptics. They synchronize. Um, but John is different. John is uh, sometimes thought of as a theological gospel, um, and they all are theological. Uh, that's the funny thing about designating John that way. Uh, but John does go about setting things up differently. He is less concerned in the timeline uh, early, so he moves a few things around. He has cleansing of the temple early in his ministry. Um, he doesn't have a Last Supper that includes communion. Instead, he does foot washing there, which the others don't. Um, and John also spends a lot more time uh, from the point of uh, washing the feet through the trial, arrest, and crucifixion. So he does a few things differently, slightly different audience there. But the big thing that we notice in John is there is the seven I am phrases. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate, the gatekeeper. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection, the truth, and the light. I am... I'm, the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the vine. These were seven ways that he self-identified himself, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to take some time walking through John's, the seven uh, I am statements. Now, early in the Gospel of John, we pick up where John the Baptist identifies him this way. The next day, starting in chapter 1 of the Gospel of John, verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look! the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, a man is coming after me, me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might reveal, be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting on him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testified that he is the chosen one of God. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When Jesus' two disciples heard this, when John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. So he makes a self-identification uh, of Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so we're going to see in the Gospel of John how he does this um, to fulfill this. That's what the Gospel of John is about. But also we're going to take a specific look at each of these seven phrases. And so we need to ask ourselves, how will we follow Jesus if he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? What is it that leads us to that point of being a disciple? Well, it, it's our belief and our following. It's saying in our heart, and our mind, I believe that he is the Lamb of God. He is the Son of God. He is the Chosen One. He is the Messiah. And I believe that he comes to take away the sins of the world, and that means my sins as well. And so I believe and I confess my sins, and I say that I want to follow him. I want him to be the Lord of my life. And my lifestyle changes. My life changes. I'm not saying I'm going to be perfect. I'm certainly not going to be perfect right away. But my desire, my heart changes from pleasing me to pleasing God. And as I follow in that pathway, he's going to lead me in many ways. But he's going to ask me to do some things. First of all, he's going to ask me to see and hear or to listen and, and to observe what he's doing and who he is. So I need to listen to God. I hear that in scriptures. I see that in his stories. I hear that through prayer time and the Holy Spirit speaking to me. So as a follower, I'm always listening and looking. I'm listening for what God is saying and looking for what he's doing, how I can find him, whether it's revealed in the text or in the world around me and in other people's lives. 
And speaking of that revealed in other people's lives, my following is going to have a lot to do with modeling Jesus' behavior, his lifestyle, and the things he asked me to do so that I might be a model and a demonstration to show the world what it means to be transformed by him. If my life does not demonstrate something different to the world, then it's not the kind of life that brings glory to him in and of itself. I always need to be pointing towards Jesus Christ. So I confess and believe in my heart. I proclaim him out with my mouth. And I allow him to transform and change my life. That is what means to see him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Tomorrow we'll begin looking at what does it mean for him to be say that he is the bread of life. And we'll walk through these next seven I am statements. Until then, may you know the love of God, the salvation of Jesus Christ, and may the Holy Spirit hold you in his hand safely and securely now and forever. May you go in the peace of God. Take care, be safe, be kind.